Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about CECL. So it's the current expected credit loss. It's the new standard. It's the new rage in banking right now. Everybody's been talking about it a lot lately. Um, the deadlines are coming up soon. So let's dive on in. So before we dive into CECL, we need to start off with ALLL. So ALLL is the Allowance for Loan and Lease Losses. Um, it's the current standard that banks are using. It's basically setting aside money um, to kind of counterbalance all those losses for loans that we see coming up um, in the near future. So one of the key aspects of ALLL is that the losses have to be estimable and they have to be probable. So it's based on a current date. We're basically looking at it and saying, hey, do we see losses coming up in the near future? Um, if we do, then we can incur them or say that they have been credited for this loss, meaning the loss has not been charged off yet, but it's coming up soon. And because of this, um, we can make an allowance on our accounting standards um, for these losses. So we set money aside for that purpose. So the big difference between ALLL and CECL is that ALLL is going to be based on incurred losses, while CECL is going to be forward looking and looking at forecasted losses over the lifetime of the financial product. One of the big reasons for CECL coming up, so CECL now is a part of FASB, which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, and it applies to all banks or financial institutions that are issuing credit. So for example, traditional banks, credit unions, um, that are also filing under GAAP. And the start dates for CECL vary depending on what type of bank or institution you are. So if you are part of the SEC, you're publicly traded, um, your filing dates are going to begin December 15th, 2019, which is coming up very quickly. Um, if you're not publicly traded, um, a lot of these deadlines will start on December 15th of 2020. But one of the big problems with ALLL is that during the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008, Banks were looking at the incurred losses, things that were going to be coming up in the near future, things that were essentially, I guess, considered bad already. There was a way to determine this based on your methodology and your framework behind your ALLL. Um, and that's fine. But during this crisis, right, they weren't forward looking enough into seeing that the economy was in a downturn. Things were getting worse and worse. And so we're actually going to have larger losses on the books than the amount of capital we set aside for these losses. This is crucial for bank stability. We need to be setting aside enough capital to cover these losses so that banks can operate without going into, you know, issues like Lehman Brothers or other banks where it's like you don't have enough capital to cover your losses. Um, but in general, CECL is going to be a better methodology because it is forward looking and we should be considering the entire lifetime of the loan as well as the macroeconomic factors that are going on in the economy. So this leads us to a long list of issues with CECL. So there is no well-accepted, well-defined um, methodology. So there's no guideline on this is the model you should be using, this is how you should calculate it, and that's causing a lot of turmoil in the banking industry because a lot of people don't really know what to do or how to address this. Um, one of the big issues is that a lot of the smaller banks have not had to do this long forecasting in general. So larger banks, for example, that have been exposed to having to do CCAR or HCR. So CCAR is the Comprehensive Capital Review and Assessment. Um, and then now it's kind of divvied out. So the really large banks are doing CCAR and they've relabeled it for smaller banks, calling it HCR, which is the Horizontal Capital Review. These banks already have all this experience. They geared up, you know, during 2010 when CCAR was implemented. Um, they have the staff, they have the people, they have the processes, the governance in place um, to build these models, these time series models that we're going to need um, to do CECL. So some of the large banks, um, I've been talking to friends kind of around the industry, trying to get a feel of what everybody else is doing. Um, they're just using their CCAR or their HCR models which again are forecasting out, you know, nine quarters based on CCAR regulations, which is 27 months. Um, they're just using these models and then trying to forecast out now the length of the product lifetime for these credit products. So this is convenient. This is great. This is wonderful for large banks. I don't think it's going to be too much of a headache. We'll figure things out, right? Banks are kind of adapting. Um, they're figuring out how to deal with the new CECL regulation. And again, everybody's kind of nervous on what the audit's going to entail. But I think big banks are in a really good position. Um, the issue we have for a lot of banks are these smaller institutions. They've not been subject to time series modeling. 
They've not been subject to like auditory regulations at this height that this will probably come in at. So the governance behind all these models, um, this is going to be a larger challenge for these smaller banks because they just don't have the staff and they just don't have the experience. And one of the things to consider here, which I haven't seen a lot written on, is that the lifetime of the product. So for example, let's say you have a mortgage, let's say your maximum mortgage is 30 years, um, you would know on your books, right? You could segregate different mortgages into different segments or categories. So you could have you know, mortgages that are like five-year mortgages, 10-year mortgages, 30-year mortgages. But one thing you need to consider with different credit products is that you have like modifications and extensions. So for those of you that don't know or aren't in the credit industry, um, a lot of times somebody can't make a payment. And so to help out the customer to be a well-standing bank, um, you can actually create some type of modification. So they had some hardship, like, I don't know, they had a big medical expense come up um, or they had, you know, their car break down, they can't make their payments anymore. So they're kind of behind because they had to fix their car. Like life events happen. Banks are actually willing to help you a lot of times with modifications or extensions to the products. This means that the product life is going to be longer. So a lot of times, if you can't make a product, a bank will just extend the period of the loan. So if you had like a 30 year mortgage, for example, and you missed a few payments, it might add on like one or two more months. These need to be included in the models, right? The lifetime of the product now is no longer a 30 year mortgage. It's going to be a 30 year mortgage plus two months or plus one month, whatever the extension is going to be. So this is gonna create a challenge in the modeling process. Uh, again, I don't know how banks are going to address this. There are different ways to do this. You could build models to predict the probability, uh, you know, extension, modifications, like different types of TDRs or trouble debt restructures here. These need to be considered in the modeling process. Um, it's going to make it a little more complicated. I'm not sure how banks are going to do this or even if banks are going to consider this, but I think this is something crucial to think about as you move forward with your CSL calculations. So as I mentioned before, I think time series is going to be the key modeling method for modeling these credit losses. Um, I know I'm a big time series guy, so that's why I kind of favor towards the time series approach. But if you're trying to predict 30 years and then like discounting losses back, for example, you really do need um, a time series model. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in here. Stationarity of your input variables and your dependent variables are required across everything. The whole model has to be stationary. I know people are gonna jump off the handle and start throwing out co-integration as like an exception. It is not an exception. Um, you have to have integration levels that are equal across the model for inputs and outputs. I know it's a little bit of a tangent here, um, but this is going to be crucial to have stable models. When you're forecasting nine quarters for CCAR, it's a little iffy. When you start forecasting 30 years, it's gonna be super challenging. And stationarity within these models and variables is going to be crucial in getting somewhat stable and accurate forecasts out that long of a period. And this leads us to one other issue within CECL modeling, right? If you try to incorporate in macroeconomic components into the model, so different types of economic scenarios, unemployment, stuff like that, this is going to be super, super challenging because you have to predict these, you know, seven years, 10 years, 30 years, these are gonna be really, really hard to do, especially if you want accuracy within the model. And I think this is one of the biggest hurdles for CECL is going to be banks, both big and small, trying to overcome um, how do you forecast out like the economic scenarios and then put those into your time series models to forecast out your losses um, for CECL. And then just to kind of wrap this video up on talking about some of the issues, the problems here, um, model governance is the biggest, I think, key factor in both CCAR and HCR. Um, I think it's one of the biggest learning curves for most banks. And now moving into the CCEL realm, uh, this is going to be applied to the smaller banks. So model governance has to be looking at both your documentation, looking at your model inventories, like you need to control the process and make it auditable. So I know this sounds super common and simple, but a lot of banks don't quite understand this. I don't know why. When you build a model, you make a bunch of assumptions. So data quality is gonna be a huge factor in CECL. Um, so where do you get your data from? Is it quality? Again, we talked about those macroeconomic variables, right? Where are you getting that data from? How quality is that data? How quality is your internal data, right? So you're pulling it probably from your internal data warehouse. How good is that? Was there processing? Was there cleaning involved in that data? You know, How did you select your model structure, your model type? All of these decisions need to be documented in your model documentation. So there should be a very, very detailed 
um, documentation describing all important decisions you made, um, how you came to the conclusions, like I chose, you know, X, Y, and Z, or we chose to use this data, we chose to handle missing values this way because of these reasons. All of this needs to be documented, and I think the model governance, so controlling the processes and procedures that need to be put in place for this model development is one of the biggest pitfalls that banks are going to struggle with. Again, the larger banks are starting to figure this out with CCAR and HCR going on, um, but smaller banks probably aren't going to have the staff, again, to support this. Um, they're not going to have processes and procedures in place to do this, and this is a crucial, crucial piece um, in Cecil, because a lot of the different documents I've been reading, which I'll post a bunch of links below to stuff I've been reading um, from different consulting firms, from the OCC, from the Federal Reserve, all of them are talking about you know, like model governance, um, repeatability. So if you build a model, you should have documentation in place that can help you repeat that model so that someone else could actually develop this. This is important for the audit perspective. So you wanna get your estimates for your CISO calculations, right? You're gonna get audited. You wanna pass the audit um, and be able to justify your losses and why you did this. So anyways, that's kind of my take here on CISO. Just covering a few little pieces. Guys, there's a ton of information on CISO out there. So I encourage you to look at all the documents below and really dig in deep. Um, if you're looking for a job and you're a college student, right? Cecil is going to be the, the hot job market. I know banks are already doing a ton of hiring for Cecil. So get out there, learn the skills you need to do model governance on the business side. Um, time series and credit modeling, for example, be huge on the modeling side. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <music>